This is the gear tester. It's designed to test what materials perform best when making custom bevel gears. There are three main tests it has to run. First is testing the friction between gears across a range of speeds and torques. This shows how efficient the gears are, meaning how much power is input and output, and how much is lost to heat. Second is the braking test, which breaks the gears. It shows the torque required to instantaneously cause the gears to fail. The final and most complex test is for wear. It shows how well the gears perform long term under constant load, giving a good estimate how well they will perform in actual use. I decided to use brushless servos for this. They allow me to both set and monitor the exact speed, torque, and position of the motor, which lets me do some really cool stuff. I needed motors capable of outputting enough torque to break the gears without any gear reduction which means I need at least 20 newton meters of continuous output torque at a few hundred RPM. Now where do you find motors that powerful? The big motors that O-Drive sells won't even come close without adding a gear reduction, which I wanted to avoid since it would add additional friction and backlash into the system. Well... I'm just kidding. I got some motors even bigger than that for this. They even turned out to be cheaper than the O-Drive ones. These motors can actually go up to 2000 RPM, but I'm limited to only 300 due to the driver I'm using. Honestly, these motors are just insane. For comparison, it would take over 3000 of these standard stepper motors you find in 3D printers to have an equivalent output. They also need a fancy controller to make them work. No just plugging them in. Basically, it takes commands from a computer and feedback from the motor to determine how much power it should send so that the feedback matches the command. Side note, all FANUC encoders that I've come across actually have A, B, and Z pins available internally, so you can use them to get the correct signals for an O-Drive. Ideally, I'd be using professional servo drives, but they happen to be a bit pricey. The drives I'm using limits the motor speed because it can only output a fraction of the voltage the motor wants. Luckily, with how motors work, Voltage controls speed and current controls torque. The drive I'm using has more than enough current to max out these motors, so everything will run just fine. Everything is powered by a variable transformer. It made it easy to get the correct voltage and I had it on hand. These motors also have brakes built in, just like the ones on the robot, to lock them in place in the event of a power failure. I don't need them for this, so I have them wired to always be unlocked when the tester is plugged in. Let's have a look at the software that actually runs the tests and sends the drive commands. It's written in Python, has speed and torque readouts for both motors, and all the settings for the test modes. After a test is run, it saves all the needed information and a user input description to a .csv file for later analysis. The gears are attached to the shafts with a screw that seats into a hole in the shaft. I originally used set screws on a flat, but the gear would just spin on the shaft rather than the teeth actually breaking. The first test of each gear will always be friction since it's non-destructive, but before that the system needs calibrated. So one of the most important parts about this system is the feedback that I get from the servos and that I can use to measure exactly what's happening with the gears. As I said earlier, the system needs to calibrate before it can run any of its tests, and it does that to measure the friction it requires just to spin the motor regardless of what's on the outside. Right now the motor is disabled, and this is just the friction from the motor. There's no current being fed into the motor to apply any torque. And as you can see, obviously there's friction there. It doesn't continuously spin, and if I just ran the test like that, say I wanted to apply a certain amount of friction to, or a certain amount of torque to the gear. Now, if I wanted to apply one newton meter and I apply that much torque, what will actually be applied to the gear is that amount of torque, plus or minus, depending on the direction, the friction that is just from the motor. So we need to find a way to compensate for that. Now, what I've done is it spins the motor at a couple set RPM speeds and measures the amount of required torque to do that. So I'll run that now. 
So it goes full speed one direction, then it'll step down a few times to go full speed the other direction. And at each step, it measures the exact amount of torque required to maintain that speed. And it orients at the end to begin testing. Now that it's calibrated, it has saved all that information and can now apply it when it wants to make the output torque a certain value. So what I'm gonna do now, right now the motors are still disabled, no torque being sent to them, but I'm going to enable one and set the torque to zero, meaning the motor is actually gonna output torque, but it shouldn't output torque on the shaft, which is sort of weird, but the torque it's outputting is just to cancel the friction internally in the motor. So this should feel almost like there's no friction. If I start to spin it, it should spin continuously. So it's enabled now, and if I give it a spin, it continues to just go. Because the motor knows the exact speed at which it's spinning, it can use that to find how much friction it needs to maintain it. So it's not perfect, it slows down or speeds up a little bit based on like the motor warming up or other slight differences, but it greatly helps and almost eliminates the, the whole friction issue with getting the output torques correct. So doing that, I can very precisely output torques that I want the gear to actually experience. An issue with this system is there's no way to compensate at zero speed because the system requires to know how fast the motor is going to know which direction to apply the counter to the the counter torque to counter the friction. So if it's stationary, it doesn't know if you're trying to push it one way or the other direction. So you'll probably see if you try to hold it still, it sort of weighs back and forth. And it's because there's a very small, even though it's almost completely stopped, it's still moving a tiny bit and it can't quite pick which direction you want it to go and it alternates back and forth. So that's why I'm running all the tests above zero speed, even if it's just like 10 RPM, that eliminates that and eliminates the static friction issue and basically fixes a lot of stuff. The grease I used is the purest stuff I could find on McMaster. I wanted something that had the lowest chance of reacting and potentially weakening different plastics. The friction test steps through a specified range of speeds and torques. At each step, it measures and saves the torque from each motor. This happens to be the most boring test. The next test is pretty straightforward. It breaks them. It sets the gears to a set speed and begins ramping up to the set max torque at the set ramp rate. When the gears become out of alignment by more than the fail distance, the test ends and the maximum torque is recorded along with the alignment torque and time value so it can be plotted later. The fail distance should technically be quite small, but it's a bit more entertaining to see the gears completely destroyed. The final test is where. As I said before, this test is the most complicated. First, it orients the gears so the measurements are consistent. Then, to find backlash between them, it applies the testing torque in one direction, measures the alignment of the gears, then flips the torque direction and tests again. The backlash is the difference between those two values. Once it found the backlash, it sets the gears to the running speed, then applies the running torque to them. It continues running until it's time to run another backlash measurement, and the cycle repeats until either the gears fail or they last the length of the test. And once again, all useful data is saved in a file for later use. I guess I'll end with running some more tests. Thanks for watching.